What up, chat? Happy Walking Dead Day. Uh, or, you know, Walking Dead Sunday. It's not really Walking Dead Day, but you get what I'm saying. Let me start this uh, poll so you guys can go, go down and vote. Uh, season finale. Did you like or not? Or no likey? Did you like or no likey? What up? Here's Negan. All right, I'm starting the poll. Simple. You liked it or not? This one, norm with most of the others, the first five, uh, I what I didn't find them to be trash. I thought they were mid, but I ultimately voted. Uh, no, I didn't like it simply because. I'm not going to rewatch them. It doesn't hold up for a Walking Dead Sunday. <clears throat> you know, it's something to watch. But this one's a little different. I'm probably not going to rewatch this episode. I might rewatch, like, you know, Daryl fighting the, the walker, which is pretty cool here. Ah. That shit was fire. Uh, you know, I might rewatch some cool scenes from this episode, but. I'm not gonna uh, rewatch this episode as like, man, I want to see that episode. If I do, it's going to be years from now and rare just to see how I feel about it again. But now that the season is over, uh, I don't know. Overall, I'm a bit, I don't know. And I'll get into that in a minute, but if you're new here, I'm going to go over my, over my thoughts and opinions, and then we'll get into some fan feedback. But, uh, oh, I love John Locke getting casted for Daryl Dixon Season 2. That's actually awesome. Let me move this over. Uh, that's actually awesome. What happened with... Uh, this intro was pretty cool. At first, I thought it was going to be wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and be done with it. But the intro was actually not bad. I was shocked Daryl didn't attack these guys, though, because it seems like there's a number of situations where characters have uh, plot armor. And, and don't worry about the chat. Well, I'm going to pull the chat on screen when we get to the fan feedback. But um, there's so many moments. I don't mean to jump ahead, but... Carol at the very end of the episode getting out of the car after almost running the guy down and then pulling that bullshit with a wrench. I can't stand when they write characters that can predict the future. Carol knew this guy wouldn't have. What if this guy was like, I don't take any chances at all. And as soon as he asked her to step out the car and he, and he was like, what are you doing? She's like, um, you're riding my friend's bike. He would have been like, um, pfft. Nope, and now that he knows what you want, and now that he doesn't give a shit about what you want, he just pops you in the in the gut. He gut shots you. What if Carol got gut shot all because she's like, I'm going to predict a future where he's going to turn his back and I'll be able to hit him with a wrench. What if he ate that hit? What if he was just like, bang, bitch, what are you, nuts? And then he picked up Carol and beat her fa face in. I can't stand characters that can predict a future like that. Like, if I'm going up against that guy... I'm not giving him a chance, you know? I'm going to bust out his kneecap, something. I'm not going to get out and hope to God, you know, my plan to foil his day, uh, you know, goes without any interruptions. Like, that shit is just dumb. Anyhow, now, we kick off the episode, and it starts with uh, World War II. Now, you know where it's going to go. It's going to go to some family lineage and blah, blah, blah. And I kind of like how they do... I mean, it matters, not just this show, but in, in other cinema, movies and shows. I kind of like how they kind of show uh, some of the past. And even though it's not the show where it's about uh, his lineage, I, I, it works here. It just barely works here. I'll say that because he's in France and his, you know, his grandfather came to France and that kind of started the father, fatherless home. Like his grandfather wasn't there because he died in war. And then, you know, for whatever reason, his dad grew up to be a dick. Maybe he wouldn't have if his uh, if his father was there. 
And then, so Daryl's father was a dick. And it does tie into Laurent. I'm just going to call him little shit face because who gives a shit about Laurent? Daryl's been with him for like two weeks. And everyone's on his ass about being like stepdad, you know? These are these motherfuckers like, oh, you took a chick on a, on a first date? Well, now you're daddy, you know? It's like, well, calm down. She's all getting all crazy with, uh, oh, you leaving Laurent? Bitch, there's actual kids that... He is a father figure that he's been in their lives, their entire lives for over a decade. And you want him to just be like, I wouldn't even want that type of person around, you know, my seed or any of any of my family that is that flaky. That's insane to me. So, again, I see how the thread works for storytelling, but I'm not buying that type of thread. Um so the, there's a few moments in this episode where you lose me. One is this whole, like, Daryl's connection with L- Laurent. It's It's been th- two weeks, you know, at the most, uh, maybe a month. Calm the fuck down. Like, how much bond can you possibly have? Like, give me a break. Not buying it. Not feeling it. I think it's terrible. Him showing up at the end of the episode, I was just praying the zombies would eat his ass. And uh, Daryl could just get on his way, because this is insane. Um the I like how th- they didn't do a good job with it, but I do like how the Laurent's real de- bio, bio dad is in that gray area. And I wish he was in more of a gray area, like he did some bad shit, but uh, he's not really like he's not evil. He's not the big bad. He's not a big bad. Uh, but I do like how they were positioning him to be in that kind of it's complicated Um Which McCall, you know, the, it's complicated. Um, uh, pff, I don't know, not level. That's not the word I'm thinking of, but uh, category, whatever. Anyhow, so they go to fight the zombies, and their serum fails, which is kind of funny. I like that, where you see that it's not perfected yet, and maybe that's hope for something cooler in season two. And I've already given in about, I'm, I'm not a fan of the whole serum walkers. I'm, I hate it. I don't want it. If we can go back in time, uh, I don't want that shit in my Walking Dead. Get out of here. If you want to do that shit, make a new zombie movie and put it on Netflix where you can do serum zombies, but not in, not in the Walking Dead. But they did it. Oh, well. Now, hopefully we can get the best out of it. Uh, but this fight, wait, is it after the commercial? This fight scene was actually pretty badass with him and Bio Dad working together. Yeah, it's after the... This guy's head just blows up. Look at him. He's thinking hard, too. Just... I think he even gets an F-bomb. See like, what the fuck? Come on. Take your time, why don't you? What the fuck is that? I thought they were going to have some sort of mutation burst out of his shit, but nope, he just pops. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And then this other one, this shit was sick, where the other one just rips the zombie's jaw off. Oh, man. Yo, that shit was awesome. Yeah, right here. Yeah, <laughs> he tackles his ass. Uh, so this... Uh, when they hit him with the the clothesline, the one, all, everything in the fight scene. Like I, I wanted a little bit more, but what we did get was awesome. Yeah, this part, he just tears his jaw off. That shit is fire. So, oh man. <laughs> Anyhow, and then Daryl throws the head up at the bitch. You know, like take it. All that shit was awesome. Uh, them getting away, Daryl just, and I like how it's blunt too. Like th- there's no time to sit around and, and moan about it. Like we got to take your arm off. You were bitten. You're going to turn anyhow. I mean, the best thing you you can do is, you know, buy us some time, help us escape. And they're right. I mean, it's quick. Daryl's just like, he's made up his mind. This is what we're going to do. I mean, it's not like he really likes the guy either. So who gives a shit? So, but he, with quickness, he takes off his arm and the guy's in it. You know, he's in it to win it. And he goes and, and fights some of the, the guards, buys him some time. Later, we see him as a walker. They slowed it down and went a little over dramatic with Laurent doing the killing. But uh, it, it's still, it, it was serviceable. It was still a good scene. I just wish they didn't go as dramatic with it. Um, but it was still cool. 
maybe lighten up on some of the the uh, slow mo. And we don't get any of this Messiah shit. Like, we, there's no conclusion. Maybe they'll cover it in season two. I'm not buying it. I think it would be dumb for AMC to or the creative minds to do anything as far as him at all. Um, and he, yeah, he just takes his arm right off. He's like, yeah, we got to do it. Look at that. We're going to get it. You got it. You got it. Done. <laughs> I wish I wish it was on camera though, practical. So their whole thing is they're escaping, and I talked about how. Yeah, here it is. So they're on the road to escape, and the I don't know the guy's name, but the the brother, the big brother that is out for revenge, and he and the other guys sneak up like ultimate ninjas walking on clouds. She doesn't even say anything. Now, maybe they were like, you know, she don't say anything, we'll kill you. But still, not a peep, not a, oh, not nothing. I, I don't know. It's just, it was awkwardly done. The guy beat, smacks Daryl with a wrench. And then he has him. And this part was the dumbest part in the history of the Daryl Dixon show. By far, the absolute worst character development, uh, the worst writing I've seen. Sure, shooting the people was cool because then he pops this guy and this guy's just like, huh? These characters should be moving. I know why they don't because the timing, uh, I'm assuming the timing, It's it'll take too many takes for them to get it right if the timing is not accurate. But at least have that guy by now should be pulling out like almost there. That way it's a really close call. Uh, but the guy's still just staring at him like, w what do you mean, bro? Why are you staring at him still? But then he gets popped in the face. So that that was cool. Yeah, he stood still the entire time until he ate that shoddy to the face. That is a shoddy, right? Anyway. Oh, no, it's that antique gun, ain't it? It, it doesn't matter. So then he wants to kill Daryl. I get it. He doesn't want to kill the boy. Okay, fine. Whatever. But the whole buildup and everything surrounding this it's just it was awful and then the fact that he's like okay next time daryl dixon I, they couldn't have it to where this guy is really big on honor and then maybe he was impressed with daryl's um fight in the arena and then he at first he was like you will die tonight blah 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 but then by the end he was kind of smirking and maybe he was like okay you know i see what daryl did there yo he's a fighter i give him props they couldn't even build up something like that for this guy and then um, I didn't hear Daryl say he was in the army. No, I heard his grandfather was in, in World War II, but they couldn't even have built up something and, and even have it to where he's like, nah, I ain't, I ain't. Oh, I, I said that wrong. Yeah, yeah, I said that wrong. Um, uh, John Locke is in the Rick and Michonne show, not Daryl season two. I have Daryl on my mind from the show, but yeah, he's, he's cast for the John Locke. Uh, John Locke is cast for the, the Rick show and all that. And anyway, so they find this and they get to the nest and I don't give two shits about that girl and her boyfriend. I, that shit didn't work at all. They barely gave it any screen time. And the screen time they did have was just like, Ooh, look at, they kissed out of nowhere for a minute there. I'm like, who is this guy? Where did he come from? It was that just there. Anyhow, uh, he gets to the nest to have more awkward conversations about them needing Daryl. When again, he's saying my family is out there. Who the fuck in the right mind says we need you here when you got family out there? It's just, it's, it's really stupid, you know? Anyway, so uh, he, he bathes her up. He doesn't dick her down, which is again, a little weird. Uh, Redneck Daryl would have plowed the fuck out of that already. You know what I'm saying? He would have did everything, spitting her ass and all that. He would have gave her the dirty business. I don't believe for a second he's not, you know, um, piping these bitches down. At least a couple of them. I don't buy that for a second. Uh, and then this guy just shows up like he's not going to get his ass kicked. You know what I'm saying? He just shows up like... Oh, yeah, I'm going to lie to your face. And she's a human lie detector. Here's my big, huge, dumb moment, number two, where 
I'm trying to go in order. Dumb, mo- really big dumb moment number one. He lets Daryl live. Huge dumb moment number two. He actually goes back to them and he doesn't stick with his lie. Uh, he has such a shit lie. Oh, I was running to save the kid. I heard gunshots and I turned around and oh no, they're all dead. <laughs> okay, bud. And then she takes him away. So he's going to be a character in season two. Not sure how, or I would imagine, I'm not sure how they're going to incorporate that, but uh, Daryl's off and there's beautiful visuals, but unfortunately the beautiful visuals are when he's traveling, like he's traveling and shit looks awesome. Like he's here and it looks awesome. It's moody. He's, this is one of my favorite uh, shots in Daryl Dixon season one, this little setup they have right here. Uh, fucking love it. It's, it doesn't even have landscape that you would only find in France too, but the way the shot composition and all this and its placement in the story, uh, you know, as far as everything he's got to think about in the rain and everything, the atmosphere and the lighting, I fucking dig this shot. Uh, the, the flame of the fire being like the colorful moment and the symbolism there. I dig this shit. So this is one of my favorite shots, but there's a few others. He goes to the grave, finds the Dixon, Graves or somewhere he's near uh yeah cool looking walker he's near where's this little house it don't matter but he walks near a house all the the travel shots uh look really good fantastic and then he gets to the beach and he gets he goes to get picked up he's fighting all these walkers and then laurent shows his that little bitch ass up and i again i hated that shit uh but the him fighting some of these zombies again i wish the story was solid throughout season one uh, because taking some of the really good moments in this episode, if you would have had it for my personal tastes, if you would have had a more solid story all throughout this shit could have been like, but legendary, awesome, N- not, you know, back in the day, walking dead, but a new legendary, awesome for the walking dead, even little stuff like how they filmed him uh, fighting these, zombies on the beach they had really good shots they trimmed down the editing it wasn't like he swung off camera and then the zombie was hit on camera Uh, they did some really good movements here uh you know a couple spots where it was a little iffy but uh good movements overall anyway uh good camera work editing was tame he gets out here and this damn kid show you little fucker uh, but I, I, some of the music placement, I like it. I could dig it. It's not my favorite, but it is what it is. And then, uh, again, Carol shows up. And this part is going to have me heated for season two. I think this is it, this is where you need the character. So you make up shit like, oh, yeah, sure. She tracked him down. He was in Maine, and she found out where he was. How? Oh, she just happened to find the guy riding Daryl's bike. Guys, do you believe that shit? You know, she's riding around all of Maine. Just looking for clues of Daryl, which would probably take her. It's an impossibility, but in this, it happens. It happens with the quickness. She finds his bike. You know, she doesn't get blasted. The guy actually, she's chasing this motherfucker down and he doesn't pop her in the face. Then she gets out of the car unarmed. He doesn't pop her in the gut. Then he walks over to her. She's still kind of shady. And he knows there's friction there. He doesn't do anything at all. And then finally he gets cracked with a wrench. Just a whole bucket of dumb. And I know it's going to get even dumber. Because she's apparently going to show up at where Daryl was taken on the boat. And then she's going to follow him to France. And then somehow from there to there she's going to find Daryl. Which is all a bucket of stupid. She should have stayed her ass put. And then, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, she should have been out with him and been separated. And the whole show should have hinted that, uh, you know, Carol, I, I got lost with somebody. And throughout the season of season one, they talk about this uh, uh, American female that washed up. So, you know, Daryl's looking for her, uh, but also trying to help Laurent. Like he's battling these two. To- you should have incorporated that in this episode. Would have been far better. 
and then he finds her because he's been tracking her down. And that would even be better because if Laurent wants him to stay or whatever his ass, and he wants to get home or find the American, but they're like, well, we don't know where the American girl is. The trail went cold, but you can get back home. Here's the boat. And of course, Daryl's not going to go. He's going to stay and look for um, Carol. And then he's got Laurent here. I don't know. This, this whole Carol jamming her in. I want Carol back on the show, but this is dumb this is buckets of dumb anyway so my opinion is uh yes i like this episode it's the one episode that i'm gonna give a like rating out of all six the other ones i did not like they just didn't hold enough substance there wasn't enough there the character work character development the uh the plot the pacing all of that wasn't strong enough uh, for me to come back to it it's like it's a one and done and it's a whole bunch of mid this one had I think it was more of it's it was either an accident or it was more of the quality overall in how it was filmed, the shot composition, the pacing. And unfortunately it it was also luck because they picked directors, but this director got lucky because uh, the story and what they were able to show was far more interesting in my opinion than what they had previously in the other five. So there's nothing you can do. That part is just luck, but uh, I would say it's good, and uh, but it's still not enough for me to go back and rewatch um, season one. I think the season <clears throat> as a whole is very low substance. It's almost mostly a Walking Dead ripoff when it comes to the main beats, and there's not enough cool character work where I would rewatch like original Walking Dead first few seasons. You could rewatch it just for how the characters interact interact with each other sometimes they're they're smart asses and snippy and the the chemistry between the actors it really works none of that is present at all in season one of daryl dixon so um i thought the finale was the best episode uh i did like it but it wasn't enough to to bring me back to rewatch season one and i'll rewatch season two because i'm 10 years invested but i just don't have any hope hope from my personal tastes, it's going to be much more than um, what we got now. Uh, the story overall, the plot overall, it's not going to grip me and anything like that. But uh, some cool character stuff I'll like. And, and that'll be it. And then zombie shit, you know. Anyhow, so that was... That was... He looks like the fakest biker I've ever seen. I don't know who got... trying to... I don't know who got, uh, yeah. Why didn't he just shoot her here? You give me, give me a break. Uh, Carol just happens to pull up behind Daryl's bike. Yep. In Maine. Daryl said he was in Maine and she just happens to find his bike. Give me a fucking break. Uh, this shit is walking dead. You're, you're far. The brand isn't that ruined. Yeah. You're far better than this. That is terrible. Anyhow. Spinner ass all that sounds like some fortune cookie wisdom from Ronnie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I saw the teaser trailer for season two, like a lot of you, before I watched the finale. AMC in their ultimate wisdom dropped the trailer a day ago, maybe two days ago. Genius. Fucking genius, you know? And so yeah. <laughs> it's just what? That's how we can skip all this Carol shit. Just put her on the... At this point, Carol should just uh, show up. You know, Daryl! And then don't even explain it. Daryl throws her a gun and they start shooting some of the bad guys and killing some zombies. And then they say some quip, you know, about like, Daryl, I smelled your ass a mile away, you know? Uh, All right. In season one, Daryl Dixon should have ended at the nest. Uh, barely survived. Some nuns still survived, and they fixed his vest, gave him new wings, made him the white cloth worn by the nuns, transcended new life. Oh, I hear you. More of the symbolism is what you're looking for for that, for that finale. All right. That was my thoughts and opinions for... Go ahead and vote down below. That was my thoughts and opinions for the finale. It looks like the finale is holding strong. Uh, uh, that I can definitely see. I'll move this over here. Yeah. Uh... That I can definitely see because obviously I thought this finale was probably the strongest. Where can I place this? I'm going to get Carol over here. Then we got, yeah, that'll work. Get Carol up here. 
we could cover some of the chat up top that don't matter. Anyway, uh, if the boat is on its way, way too convenient, then it shows up at Normandy at <laughs> the same time he does. If this was a port in France, where is he going? Because it's known sanctuary, it would have made sense. Uh, so many questions. How in what world does it end like that? So Laurent just had to kill his dad. Seems like you're not certified until you can kill your own family member. Yeah, they, they piled it on thick with that one. Uh, so Daryl's just abandoned his search for Rick. They don't even mention the search for Rick. It's like they totally avoided it, which is weird, man. Just joined. Can you recap what you thought of the gladiator fight? Uh, I thought it was awesome. I liked it. I wanted more, though, but I liked it. I freaking loved Rage Filled that they were and attacked each other. Yeah, I like the I like the Rage Filled. Now that we get it, you know, I still don't want it in The Walking Dead, you know? I think it. you can do creatively cool stuff with the zombies. They just need to do that. Adding these gimmicks is only going to last. How many times can you see a zombie go mad and rip the jaw off another zombie? You know, once before it's like, oh, we've seen that before. So I wish they just got more creative. But I'll say now that it is here and hopefully it's not too ridiculous. This shooting darts at them. I, I got to like blink because that is incredibly stupid, you know. Um, And I, I, we do this all the time before someone says, but it's got zombies in it. Yeah. Zombies are the only thing that's fake. The whole show is supposed to be grounded. Uh, that's what. That's why I, I believe that's how it works the best. But this whole shooting them with little darts, I think it's stupid. And keep in mind, as of right now, unless they make some changes, if they're not shooting zombies with darts, we don't get variant zombies like that. So it, it just, it's dumb. You know, I want, I want it to be, if you're doing it already, I want Daryl and them to be out in the, in the wild and they're terrified of making noise, being, let it be known. And then more than one of the variants shows up and then it's like, we are fucked, you know, that tension. But now it's like, if the, those people ain't shooting them up with roids, you don't have a problem. All that rah rah with tattoo guy only to kill the soldiers. This not justifies unless he is told Eskimo hat girl is the one that killed his brother and he gets her behind. He gets her behind. Yeah, they they're, they don't even do the the old girl, the first girl that show up. She's been long gone out of, out of the story. It doesn't make sense. You would think they would pop that in there. Like Daryl says, "Yo, you know I'm not the one who killed your brother." Or well, he should have said something like. You know what's crazy is I'm not even the one who killed your brother. That girl killed. And then the guy is like, oh, shit. I got fooled. That bitch. I had her. And, I, you know, she fooled me. Um, That would have made far more sense. Then when the guy is, is um, does the, the t turn, it's, you know, because at that point, he's already invested with the big baddie female. You know, I don't, I don't know her name. The big, the... Um, the copycat of the CRM leader or the one leader, you already have him invested. So when she's like, you want to go get your revenge, what's he going to do? Say no, he's already in a tight spot. So he says, yes, after finding out that Daryl's not even the one that killed his brother, that would have been far better. I mean, Daryl did kill his brother, right? But it just fits better if the guy, if Daryl's like, yo, I didn't even do it. You know, that girl did it. I don't know. Laurent somehow sneakily followed Daryl all the way to the beach. Made zero sense. He was knocked out when Daryl left. Not only was he knocked out, did you see Daryl's timeline? He tells this bitch, I'm out. And for copyright reasons, I'm not going to cover it all. But look, he leaves the little Rubik's Cube because he's like, you're a little dumb shit. Try to figure this out. Hopefully, you know, that's why I left you because you can't even do a fucking a Rubik's cube. You dumb little brat. Um, so we get this cool visual. Sure. So Daryl's on the road. Look at this road. Look at this cottage. Like he's he's traveling. He's putting distance in. And then there's these fields. I mean, this looks like a trek, you know. Then there's this. He stays over at night in the rain in an unknown location. And then he's walking through this field. And it looks great, by the way. Then he's in this field. Then he's in this field. 
and he's going and going and going. Then he finds a graveyard up this hill. Here's a little, little American flag. There's a little graveyard. He, and then that field, he's still going. I mean, there's even more space here where he's going. He's, he, ha he has himself a little cry. And then he's on the beach, and he's, he's beating these zombies up. And then Laurent shows up out of nowhere. No adult brought him. He went from being a little bitch to suddenly following Daryl for one whole day, one whole night, and one part of the day. You got, at the very least, you know, at the very least, uh, it's, it's terrible. It's dumb. It is incredibly stupid. Now that it's over with the series, is better for you, Negan and Maggie? Well, I thought the Daryl show, even with my mid-rating, I'm going to have to give overall the uh, Daryl show is better than the Negan and Maggie show. First off, the Negan vs. Maggie, uh, it's it's done to death. I'm so fucking sick of it. And they're not going to do anything new and interesting and, and wow. They're not going to wow you. Same old shit, same old savior shit. Like, I didn't care about the communities that were there. I don't care about the structure of people that were there. So I would have to say I enjoyed watching the Daryl show more than the Negan versus Maggie, you know? Uh, let's see. The whole shooting super semen darts at the walkers is cool, just not walking dead. The finale was okay, but not <laughs> enough to care about season two. Super excited for Terry O'Quinn in the other show. Hope his talent isn't wasted. Loved him since the stepfather. Bam. Um, stepfather. Is that Terry Quinn, the stepfather? Let me see this. And I'll show you who we're talking about. Uh, let me see. Stepfather. Oh, shit. That's right. That was him. The original stepfather should be a Halloween tradition. That's right. That's an old horror movie. Uh, 1987. Yo, I got to watch that again. I'm putting that on my list. So here's the guy. Here's the guy, Terry Quinn. He was in Lost. We're going to do, we're going to get rid of this for a second. So this is the guy in Stepfather, 1987. And uh, this is him now, though. Uh, he was John Locke in Lost. Uh, he was also in, he was in Stepfather 2. Uh, the Stepfather right here. I remember, um, renting this on VHS, but like wondering, debating it for like, cause every time I go to the, you can only get like one or two movies, but then they had a, um, a time where it was like one movie for like a dollar and you can get as long as you rented like five or six or some shit like that. And I had rented, um, I believe that's when I had rented stepfather, but I was young. Uh, and it was in like the early nineties, but that shit, uh, where's that? Come on. Oh, yeah, it's already pulled up. Stepfather, bro. Uh, thank you very much, Veronica. Real name. What is it? God knows we don't. His personal history was falsified. His prints were untraceable. Huh. I don't know if I can watch it without it getting... Family. Well, a little creep. He's a wonderful man. He wants <laughs> to care for us. There's just something about him. He's creepy. Oh, that guy. Trailer's not the best. What the fuck? Dude's psycho. Uh, I'm I'm gonna check this out. Trailer's not good at all, though. It's one of those. Some of those older '80s movies have the worst trailers. Like even Predator, I believe, had like a terrible trailer. Uh, but the, Veronica, thank you very much for the support. I appreciate it a lot. Let me go back and. Okay, but not enough care about season two. I I hear you there. I mean, I, my whole thing is. The story from season one with Daryl Dixon, it's there's it's definitely not enough. I agree 100%. Uh, 
the story alone, uh, I have no, I, I don't give two shits if season two is canceled and shelved and they do something different. Like, I don't care at all. Not even a tiny bit. I don't care about Laurent. I don't care about his aunt. I don't care about any of those other survivors. I don't care about any of this story. It just didn't connect. Uh, however, when it comes to being invested in Daryl Dixon and what could potentially be the follow-up of his story after season two, like where does that go? Do they come back home? Is that their, their whatever? And kind of curious to see how they connect to Carolyn. So for the character, it's like, yeah, I'm in. But f if it comes to the story element, no, there's not enough there to care about season two. Uh, super excited for Terry Quinn and the other show. Uh, hope that isn't wasted. That's what you said. Yeah, I really hope he's not wasted because he's a strong character actor. He could do some good shit. Um, he could do some really good shit. And again, uh, thank you very much for the support, Veronica. You are fucking awesome. Uh, aren't you happy Daryl now has an adopted son to add to the future spinoff of character kids when they run the group? No, I'm not happy at all. Like, that shit don't count. <laughs> he didn't raise that little son of a bitch. Maybe if he's with him for a while, then I could be like, okay, they grew up on yada, yada, yada. But Daryl's got people that are already, you know what I'm saying? Unless they're ready to go to America, I don't know how they're going to make that work. Laurent has teleportation powers soon. He'll be able to fly and laser all the zombies. Yeah. Uh, he'll be the first mutant to save the world. Re world rebuilds and spin off. That would suck. I don't understand why everyone worships this kid. It isn't because his mom became a walker that gave birth. I, you know what? I, I don't get it either. And they, they didn't even answer it other than we feel this boy is special. Like that's it. You know, I was special too when I was a kid. <laughs> Look what happened. Uh, yeah, life from death. Rick and Michonne is the last hope. It really is. Hey, Ronnie, did you notice the gate scene was also a ripoff of Sam and Henry gate scene from The Last of Us? Uh, oh, you're right. You're right. They did get trapped behind uh, the gate. <laughs> what well, I... I I'd be interested in a 2009 version of the stepfather, but the one with Terry Locke is in, I'm sorry. Yeah. Terry Locke, <laughs> Terry Quinn is a big reason to check out the original, but I don't even remember a 20, 2009 version. I'd have to look that up, but, but back to the gate scene, there's definitely a gate scene cause they get separated, but I guess the big difference is, he doesn't have to, he's not forced to do anything, you know, in, in Last of Us. But they do have that separation of it by a gate or what a door or whatever it was. Funny you mentioned Carol just showing up in France somehow. At the end, I was thinking it was her calling out to Daryl from the boat. Lo and behold, the brat somehow making his way to the beach. <laughs> uh... Uh, I figured that was the case, but Norman played it so dead. It's like Judith tells Daryl his best friend brother might be alive, and Daryl's face is like blank. Wished more emotion. Uh, wasn't Melissa McBride unavailable to film in France? What change? I, I don't know, bro. Um, I don't know what it was. All I know is she wasn't available to film, and then look, now she's available to film. It... it Maybe there was other obligations, you know, but, but I don't have the information. If it was simply a negotiation, boy, that blew up. Fans are always the ones who got to suffer for that shit, you know, because even if you enjoy her on the show, her finding Daryl is dumb. It's brain damage levels of dumb. Like that shit, is, I can't say it enough. That is dumb. Like I want Daryl and Carol to be reunited again. They're a good duo. It is dumb, you know? Um, reunion of Terry Quinn and Michael Emerson on the show would be great. Loved Quinn. Good looking. Uh, the Ones Who Live teaser was weak. It was. I talked about that before. The teaser, when I first saw it, you're so excited for Walking Dead stuff. But then when you look at what the teaser is, it's just like Rick killing some walkers. Barely. It's so close up. 
and then Michonne just in an outfit. And it's like, ooh, aren't you excited? Well, no, we got to see a little more than that, you know? But soon, soon we'll see more because it comes out in February. I think she just wanted a break for a season. Yeah, and and then, I don't know. I don't know. I get it, but still, it's, I don't know. It's not like you're a fucking plumber. You know, you make TV. You know what I'm saying? Like, how much of a fucking break do you need? Come on. Uh, I have a hard time taking actors needing a break serious. Get the fuck out of here. They already got such cushion lives, you know? Um, anyone who's doing manual labor, those are the people where I'm like, oof, that's rough. <laughs> Uh, it's because she said at the Rumors of France show she didn't want to move to France to film. However, towards the end of filming, they somehow convinced her, maybe with money. I, yeah, and that's the shit, too. You don't have to move to France. Sure, th- you're going to be... I guess, technically, it's it's moving to... Like, celebrities moving is not the same as you and I when we move. Like when I move, I'm I'm lifting all my shit and I'm moving to France and whatever I can't take with me, which is a lot, you know, I'm selling because I can't take all my shit to France. Like that's it. Like I'm I'm uprooting my entire life. Where am I kidding gonna go to school? Blah blah blah. Celebrities is a bit different. I mean, maybe if you're an up and comer and you don't have like pull like that, it's gonna be harder to place your kid, but you know, she's older. I don't think she has any young kids. Uh, when she moves to France, like she can leave her shit here at her house. You know what I'm saying? And then she could just go and stay in France while they film. A little bit of a difference. Unless there's something I don't know about. Sure, maybe when you go there, you want to stay for season one and season two. And you're going to live there for two years. Okay, you know, you're going to live in France for two years. I, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not. Uh, and there's probably more to it, but just simply, I don't want to live in France for two years. Oh, how awful. You live in France and, and make movies. There has to be more to it than that, because it sounds pretty weak. Are you done with Resident Evil streams? Yes. Uh, no, we finished. We ended the uh, DLC the other night. Melissa McBride probably just needed a break. 11 years and all that commitments could have been that and contract matters. Uh, I, well, I don't think it was contract because she was the one who pulled out. They were all ready for it. Uh, unless it was money and they didn't want to put that in the news either side. Which I, don't, I doubt it would be money, but it could be with AMC involved. Uh, they get a new apartment, condo, or rent a house. How hard is it for Gimple to plant just a bit of connective tissue between these spinoffs? I don't know. Uh, Listen, I've been a defender of Gimple for a lot. Like, I think he gets a lot of shit when it's not warranted. But there's one thing I will say. Uh, Gimple, here's a letter from the fan base, from an open letter from someone who has defended you a lot because I think you get more shit than you deserve, but... What the fuck are you doing? (laughs) You have one job. Chief content officer. What in the fuck are you doing? You should be connecting these worlds together. There's no connection. Here's how they write it. Well, we don't know how we're going to connect Daryl and Rick, so let's not mention Rick. Okay, done. (laughs) You know, here, Daryl, go to France. There's no connective shit at all. Oh, we saw CRM, you know, like a black helicopter in the sky. Wow, the fucking uh, the Hodor moment of that. You go from writing on Game Game of Thrones when they revealed what Hodor was. I think I came a little. That shit was like cinematic sex. That was fucking amazing. The Hodor moment was goddamn fucking amazing, and they set that up seasons ahead of time. Now they had a book and all that. Sure. Blah, blah, blah. But my point though, is they actually actively worked on it. They worked on these connective tissues throughout other TV shows, other shows, other movies, other, this, other, that they have connective tissue, even in their main series where they're, they're uh, putting seeds of what's going to pop off down the, the line. Like even shield did it the old show. They had these seeds of something that didn't really matter. It was like, Oh, they're just bad guys. And then two seasons later, it comes full circle. And you're like, Holy shit. Sons of anarchy did it. Breaking bad. Did it. You fucking name it. They did it. Gimple. What are you doing, bro? That is your job. I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but 
Daryl, the Daryl show shouldn't have had connective tissue with. First off, Carol should have been there but lost from the rip. None of this like, oh, she's tracking him down. Fuck you. There's no way she's tracking him down. So this is, and this is where, uh, I, I, I mean, I would argue like Scott Gimple, this is your fucking job. Like Carol should have been there and lost and then not reunited, but teased, uh, on his trail. So that way it's not so stupid when we're like, Oh, where's Carol? Maybe you'd have to actually actively work on the flashbacks. Like Carol being just, uh, they did her voice for the flashback. You, you mean Carol couldn't be washing up, uh, Hey, tch, tch, tch. Hey, uh, I'm going to run out and go do this thing. Okay. I'll be out in a minute. You, you, you couldn't add her voice two more times. And then instead of showing her in the flashback, uh, you had her voice and, and you know, she was there. She got taken too. Um, you could have done any clever bits of, of writing, but they just said no. They were like, no. Nope. The Hodor moment didn't even happen in the books. Okay, well, that's even better for the writers of the show. Because that shit was fire. A lot of shit like that where uh, they plant the seeds and then they tweak it and change it. And even in movies like Marvel Universe, or in uh, uh, whatever phase that was with... Um, uh, <laughs> Oh my God, Thanos, you know, they did a, early on, they stumbled a little, you know, Thanos looked a little wonky, kind of, you know, sound a little goofy. It, it was, uh, he was just out there on a rock. Like, what are you doing, bud? What, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, but you know, the connective tissue they had kind of works pretty good, but he walking dead does not do it. They're like, well, we don't, we're not sure yet how we're going to handle that. Let's just not include any of it, whatever. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Maggie's scene was probably shot in Georgia. Maggie's scene was probably shot in Georgia. Maggie for what? Wait, let me, what are you guys talking about? So hyped for the train wreck. That is going to be Troy's resurrection. Oh yeah. Troy. (laughs) Uh, now listen, I'm probably not going to cover fear. It all depends on what you guys think, but I am covering the the episode where Troy returns. So it's probably the premiere, I would imagine. I thought when the walker's head popped, a parasite was going to pop up like Resident Evil 4. I was thinking something like that, too, like something gross, you know? Um, do you think they will mess up the Rick show? Are you excited for the show? Do you think it'll only get one season? I'm thinking the Rick show is going to get uh, a second season. I'm also thinking they'll fuck it up and, and announce it before too early and I am 90% convinced it's going to be mid and there's going to be a bucket of cringe. Uh, and I'm expecting a nosedive just from, just from their track record. And I really hope I'm wrong. I'm praying I'm wrong, but, uh, the actors getting more creative control that usually kills it. Nine times out of 10 actors suck at it you know especially their own characters they're just too close to see the bigger picture but we'll see uh the rick and michonne trailer still looks flat and hasn't moved the needle for me as far as something unique and special just feels like reacquired viewing yeah it does feel like that right now i low-key would have put my boot right up laurent's chest (laughs) towards those walkers if you have food kids to play with sunday school soccer balls go home rogers day yeah, he's got it made, bro. And he's like, yeah, I'm leaving. Uh, Gimple is a massive Lost fan, so I can see why he got uh, O'Quinn onto the show. Is it Terry O'Quinn, right? I think I said it wrong. Terry Quinn. Um, yeah, there was a clause in the contract that pretty much she would still get paid even if they weren't involved during the three years they signed for. Uh, Gimple should have been, t- been taken to, oh yeah, that's right. They did sign con, they did new contract negotiations about, uh, contracts that were better aimed for cameos and bouncing between different shows, uh, which was smart because they used her voice in this at the very least. So, um, those new contract would probably help out in, in more eventually when they get going. Uh, Gimple should have been taking notes from the Fast and Furious. God knows when that series will finally end. <laughs> Hodor moments doesn't. If Rick's show, if Rick's show, someone doesn't tell him, people 
wore Walker skin and walked with them. I'll be upset. Still mad Rick missed out on the whispers. Andrew's acting would have been. Yeah, I'm really pissed Andrew missed out on the whispers. The whispers is nuts. And you know fucking damn well there better be some leftover whispers that the CRM runs into. So that way we could just get a small tease at Rick's reaction with that type of shit. Could that be awesome? At least we'll find out what who Carol said was back when she joins Daryl. Laugh out loud. If it's Rick, Daryl will say, nope, I'm just kidding. I'm out. How dumb. It's not Rick. It's Gavin. It's 1000% not Rick. It's nothing that's going to be anything. Uh, they just do that to bait us. You know, first off, it's not Rick factually. We know that it's confirmed. Daryl's um, R- Carol is not going to be like, hey, how you doing? So uh, I thought today I would shave my pussy and uh, it hurts. It's kind of itchy. Oh, by the way, Rick came back. So my toenail got jammed and I just ripped that fucker off. I mean, toenails are so the patriarchy. You feel me? There's no way she's going to just be chilling and then say, oh, by the way, Rick came back. It's not Rick. 1,000% not Rick. I mean, it's planned to happen, uh, but the book hasn't come out yet. It's been confirmed by the writer. Oh, okay. It's been confirmed. Um, well, they okay. So they still had a little bit of, of help then. Can't wait to see you roast fear. Oh, it's coming. Ronnie, talking shit on fear and making fun of it is fun. I agree. Ronnie, how long till you think? Well, I, I agree, but there's there's some that's just so draining and terrible, you know? Ronnie, how long do you think Kirkman makes some new Walking Dead comics? You know, it's only a matter of time. I do agree it's only a matter of time until the Walking Dead comic makes a return. I would say we have a... How long has it been now? It's been a few years. I would say within uh I would say within five years, you know. Within the next five years, we'll see uh Walking Dead comic return. Um I heard Andrew Lincoln and Deny were co writing with Gimple, so that is covered up. Can't see the bar being high on the show, but I'll check it out. Yeah, you could be an amazing actor and you could even be a great writer. But if you're too close to a project, often we see it doesn't work. So I don't have hope that it's going to it's going to work. I don't know. We'll see. But all right, let me shut down the poll. We're going to be ending soon. The poll is actually 80 20. This one I can definitely see. We had a really cool fight. You did have some of the fat that was trimmed because the characters had to go from you know, being captured to on the run to finding the location, confronting the bad, uh, introducing this location. Then Daryl has to venture out. You have some emotional bits and then you end out the episode. So it did feel like there was some fat trimmed. However, some of the clunkier moments are are still like a, a flat uh you know, stick, just a paddle. Yeah, paddle. Just whacking you right in the face. I saw the one, I thought of one other aspect that was really dumb for a second there, but I lost it. Uh, it doesn't matter. It, it was in combination with some of that other dumb shit. It's just, what the fuck? Uh, it'll probably be when he starts running out of cash, I guess. Yeah, well, I don't think, I don't think the company's doing like explosive anyway because they're crowdfunding, you know? And I know that rich people use other people's money to do stuff. I mean, that's the golden rule for rich people. They they never use their own money. So I can understand why the company would be crowdfunding. But uh, for the, the home of The Walking Dead, for them to do something that people like me should be doing and other YouTubers, like people that are just regular people. You know, if we want to get something done, we crowdfund. You mean to tell me this multi-million dollar, you know, company is doing the same thing. They're actually selling like uh, mock shares of the company. I don't know the details, but I know it's been something I talked about. Another company, I think Legion does it as well. It's basically like you give money and you can get credits. You know, you can buy credit. It's basically the like Kickstarter rewards, you know, but it's like directly to the, to the thing. I'm pretty sure they're still doing that. Cause I saw it up on Facebook, which it's not bad. If you're an up and coming, like if I started a, a, 
um, a new production studio tomorrow and we had plans to do some stuff and maybe we got a little investors and then I crowdfunded. Sure. It makes sense, you know, but if I was, if you're the home of the walking dead and you've already funneled hundreds of millions of dollars through the company, uh, I, I don't understand how you're not exploding right now. And I said this before, they should have the rights to, they should have been had the rights to, uh, Halloween or they should be making moves like that, you know, by now I would have thought, but, uh, and I tried to hang in there to, to, you know, to, uh, buy, sh- buy into what they have coming out. But a lot of it is like, you know, f- I don't know, silly cartoony. Oh, look it. Here's a turtle that you know, breathes fire and he plays volleyball. It's just weird cartoony shit. I, they just totally lost me. It's like here, grounded gritty zombies gore you know some horror oh look at this we have an elephant that can fly with a kite and he shoots electricity out his tail and i I just i don't know what the fuck you're doing anyway why daryl continue to find selfish women that's the first thing he tells them i'm looking for my family and they take it as no we're your family i know his voice is nice and he's a protector but come on yeah wait the moment she did that, I I immediately was like, you're a foul fucking bitch. You know, think about it. Think about it. He has a family. He has children that are in his family. Right. And this woman is so incredibly selfish and has her head up her own ass. She only wants him to be there for her nephew. Fuck his family. You know, and I don't know if these writers, they're so tunnel visioned on Oh, these characters, they need Daryl to protect them. They want him to protect them. She's a strong female character, though. She, you know, she could steal shit. And she can escape on her own. We don't need Daryl to protect her. Oh, but a child can protect her. And then also, but we need you to stay, Daryl. Fuck your family. What kind of foul, filthy, selfish bitch? Fuck that character. That character is forever tarnished because these writers have tunnel vision. They're like, we need them to want Daryl to stay so we can have this emotional, you know, Daryl looks back and he's like, I'm glad this little piece of shit stopped me from going back to my family because I kind of wanted to stay, you know, and I'm going to gag his aunt, you know, the moment I get back, (laughs) you know, she's going to gargle on my fucking (laughs) <laughs> piss stick like there's no fucking tomorrow you filthy coke whore uh it's just it's wild daryl's a wild motherfucker he's still a redneck to the fullest you know anyway uh ronnie how long do you think kirkman makes uh, okay we're a full circle moment would be daryl in trouble and dwight and sherry save him i like to see that reunion i i don't care i'll be honest i i see what you want from it you know but um i hear you i get it uh, I just don't care. I think it's because fear ruined those characters. I heard Andrew Lincoln and Denier co-writing. Okay, I already did that. I'd probably be when he starts running out of cash. I already did that. When Daryl... Okay, is Alicia dead on fear? I can't even remember. She's supposed to be, but it's like unknown officially right now. Uh, Gurkman... Gurkman. <laughs> Gimple said at New York Comic Con, the idea is for these spinoffs to merge at some point. I heard that and I, I made fun of that because this is fucking insane. How is that not a plan that is already in motion after three seasons a spinoff has been filmed? Yeah, I made fun of it because that's what you're supposed to say, but your actions have no, there's no value there. There's no substance there. What you're saying is what fans get excited to hear. But there's no substance because there's no connective tissue. You're not laying the groundwork at all. And, well, a little tiny bit. But it's so irrelevant. It's based on them just having different shows and what's connected in that show itself. Uh, do you use Letterboxd? I, I started, but I think I it was Letterboxd. It was some app for... I, no, I don't know. It might be an app to tell me what movies I own. Is that what it is? Um, I'm probably not going to get into Letterbox though. Too. I know. I think I know of it. That's where you uh, write down your thoughts and opinions on movies and shit. I just don't. I I just don't care to sit down and and do that. I got to be real with you. But I'm cool with like quickly slapping. You know, I got this movie, I got that movie, I liked it, I didn't like it. Uh, you know, little small stuff. 
Uh, do I have that? Letterboxd. Maybe not. Oh, CLZ Movies. That's what I have. And that is... Oh. You need a fucking subscription? Well, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, never mind. I'm not doing that. <laughs> it's like pay 15 bucks a month just for you to log how many movies you got. Search and rescue theme is getting old. People got to be MIA at some point. They left Alicia's fate open-ended. Okay, she's not dead. Yeah, not yet. <clears throat> Um, hey, Ronnie, do you think M Mia Goth would play a young Pamela Voorhees? I think she could play a young Pamela Voorhees. The question is, do we want a young Pamela Voorhees? I don't. I want Jason, you know? If they were doing something that led into Pamela Voorhees, Jason, and then, like, you know, the the total origin of Jason, I'm down with that. But if it's, here's a whole season of Pamela Voorhees, uh, fuck out of here. Unless it's like really awesome, but that's a hit and a miss usually for them. Uh, you think Rick series will be good casting looks good. Uh, you know who should be Pamela Voorhees, uh, older Pamela Voorhees, the girl who was the original final girl from Friday the 13th. That would be cool to have her reprise the role of, um, uh, well not reprise the role, but go from the final girl of the original Friday the 13th to her being Pamela Voorhees in the remake uh, show that leads up to like the new reboot of um, Jason. But I, I think the rights are, are, you know, not what they need to be to do Jason. I believe the show only has rights to Pamela, not hockey mask adult Jason. Um, you think Rick's series will be good? Casting looks good. I'm hoping it is, but I have my doubts. Daryl Stang felt so forced. Everyone just blowing him off. The woman basically forced Daryl to be a stepdad. Yeah, 2023, y'all. <laughs> Daryl going to get Jaded Pinkett Smith if he's not careful. Ouch. Uh, how's Daryl not smashed Isabel yet? It's so bullshit because the writers are afraid of the fan base. Let me t let me listen. That is the truth. Uh, Daryl didn't pipe her down because the writers are afraid of the fan base straight up. There's no other reason why he didn't smash that in the tub, you know, open wound and everything. <laughs> um, and then the kid would have got his ass beat. Fuck. Yeah. I would have brought him right back home with a swollen eye. Like keep this little fucker in the house. Uh, Carol saved the show. Seriously. Daryl is asexual or something. I don't believe that shit. That's just something they say when they don't know how to fucking write in. He's asexual, but he was with Leah, and they just did a terrible job at that, you know? Um, Walking Dead does a lot of... Yeah, and here's the thing. You could just be very low sex drive, not interested in, in romance, you know? Um, Walking Dead does a lot of search and find capture moments. Have you heard of the rumor that there might be a spinoff with Troy and Madison? That is, that'd be the dumbest fucking uh, decision they could make. That would be fucking do it. AMC, do it. Because that is the dumbest shit I've heard in a long time about The Walking Dead. How are they going to connect the shows if the timelines are off? Daryl Dixon is a few months after 1124 at most, but isn't Dead City like five years after? Good question, bud. Gimple might do well with Rick's series. Do, uh, do people forget season four and CP? Uh, what's CP? I mean, season four, and I give Gimple a lot of credit for season four, but you're picking one solid thing out of the tons of shit that he's goofed, you know? But I, I do, that's what I said. Gimple being a part of it isn't doesn't automatically make it bad. He's done a lot of good shit. He's fumbled some, absolutely, absolutely, you know? But I just, I, I don't have overall faith in the series. And I right now, I got to say, the connective tissues are weak. After all these years being exposed to the elements and salt spray, there should be nothing left of that flag. Probably not, no. Uh, that wouldn't make sense, though, and they keep saying it's 12 years into the apocalypse and Daryl Dixon, the main show, ended 12 years into uh, Daryl has low testosterone. I want to spin off where Carol, Carl never died. Ouch. 
Still found it funny how AMC decided to piss off both Daryl Ship fan bases, Carol and Connie, by having him randomly hook up with Leah. Yeah, and that shit is kind of funny. You get the uh, Daryl and Carol, the uh, Darylers or Carolers, and then you get the uh, Daryl and Connie, the Donnies, or what would it be? Uh, Carly's? I don't know. But you get these two groups are going nuts online, attacking each other, attacking other fans, because 90% of you shippers are fucking mental as shit, you know? 10% of you are cool. You're just in it for, you know, the... uh, uh, living vicariously through the, the romantic situations, but you're, you're big into, you love relationshiping and blah, blah, blah. But the 90% of you shippers, you're fucking mental. Like you need a loony bin. No joke. You're fucking mental, mental. Um, and AMC thought, or the, the creative team thought, I know I got a good idea. Daryl doesn't get with Carol. Ooh. Okay. But Daryl doesn't get with Connie. Ooh, Really? Daryl gets with this random fucking bitch, you know, like this bitch, we don't even know who the fuck she is, Daryl gets with her, oh, hell yeah, and then they're like, it gets even better, what, what are we gonna do, after he gets with her, and he doesn't get with either of those, we're just gonna make her the weakest fucking, like, love interest, love triangle, religious villain, oh, yay, that's amazing, oh my god, it's terrible, um, Ronnie, do you like Dawn of the Dead 2004? Not particularly. And will you watch the supposed sequel to I Am Legend? Did you like the alternate ending more? Uh, that's a Here's the thing. I love the book I Am Legend. It's a short story. Amazing. And I despise both endings to the I Am Legend movie. Uh, the movie had no balls. The movie is dog shit. The movie is fucking watered down ass aids. And I might watch I Am Legend 2. Uh, Will Smith has just been losing so much charisma. Um, bank, bank, I don't even know what to call it anymore. Will Smith's charisma is just plummeting by just being a bitch, you know? And I, I'll watch um, I Am Legend and it, just because I love that, that type of uh, storytelling. But it'll be on Redbox. They're going to get the absolute minimum financial rewards from me. Because not only was the first movie trash and a disrespectful touch of trash to the short story that is amazing. But the title doesn't even fucking make sense. Because I Am Legend in the book is because he is the very last human being alive. He is it. Finito. After he dies... And the ending was them getting ready to hang him. That's it. You know, that is it. Once he dies, he is a legend. They're all going around him like, what the, you know, like this is it. He's the, he's the very last, no bullshit. No, someone else is out there alive. No cure. Nope. He is the final survivor and they're about to execute him when the sun comes up type shit. And that's it. I am legend. It hits different. But then you got the movie people. They're so scared of their own fucking shadow. Biggest pussies in the world. And they're like, we can't do that. I know. Let's have the the fake zombies. Because they're not zombies. They're vampires. They've always been vampires. They're supposed to be vampires. They don't like the sun. You know what I'm saying? They are smart. They set traps. They drink blood. They're vampires. And then... They're like, oh, let's do like this. This retarded zombie is uh, looking for his girlfriend, and Will Smith recognizes the butterfly tattoo, and then they just they they leave him alone. Like that's so romantic and like ba ba ba, fucking end yourself, bro. What the fuck? This is stupidest shit I've ever heard. Uh, I still disappointed. Shane and Dale never got together. The sexual tension between them was intense. Yeah, the looks Dale gave was amazing. He was all like. I can't even replicate it. It's that amazing. Um, they dropped the Daryl and Carol relationship and the Daryl and Connie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was stupid. You think Rick should lose his hand? No. I think that is that, that that boat has sailed. That ship has sailed. That's gone. There's zero point for Rick losing his hand. It's not even interesting anymore. And they've already done it with Aaron. So there's no point. Um. Favorite food, drink. Pizza's favorite food, drink would be iced tea. Sweet tea. 
Um, hard day. Uh, Daryl's Daryl's look, his stern look, those crazy eyes. Daryl is too much of a badass to have just one woman. Agreed, bro. Agreed. He's a fucking redneck. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not into. He's not gonna make relationships work. He's not gonna be successful at it. But you know damn well that if a chick shows him, you know what I'm saying, a little interest, he's fucking smashing. What are we doing here? I just, it's fucking insane. It's insane. Uh, Shane plus Dale equals Dane. I am legend messed me up, man. Laugh out loud. Uh, The book or the movie? Because if the movie, I, I don't have anything to say about that. But the book, yeah, the book is fire. Because the book had m- multiple things going on. And, you know, like his dog got it. There was this one moment where he did find other humans, but something happened and it was like, whoa, you know, that blew your mind. That was right at the end. It was like, oh, shit. There was this one, oh, shit moment. Well, you're probably not going to read the book, but I, I recommend you read the book. But uh, I'm going to spoil it anyhow if you didn't. There's a moment where right at the end, you could pause this for like 10 seconds and then because I'm about to spoil the shit, but then go and, and read it. But um, he finds other humans and they're they're making the plan to either escape or or fight. And like, I forget which it was like they're getting ready for this wave of attack from the zombies, the new species, which is the whole point of the story. And uh, the, the vampires, the vampires, they're not zombies. Did I say that wrong. They're a new species of, of man, and they're vampires. Anyhow, and so he links up with these new survivors. I think it was a girl and her daughter, and something happens where he ends up wiping her face or something, and her face wipes off, and it's makeup. She has been she was actually a vampire this whole time, so he wipes her makeup off, and he's like, oh, fuck, and that's when she betrayed him and let, him all, let all the vampires in to get him, and then ba ba ba. Uh, unpause. <laughs> you can unpause right now. You can unpause. I'm done talking about I Am Legend. Uh, the movie, scary as fuck. Oh, I gotcha, I gotcha. Uh, once Rick's story is finished, The Walking Dead, I'm tapping out. Uh, hey, that might be a good place to be, you know? Yeah, I should have haram at this point. That's why Romero disliked the series. It's soap opera with zombies. You know, uh, I hope you do read it, Richard. I hope you do read it. Sounds like The Strain. I'm not sure. Do they do that shit in The Strain? If so, Strain copied off of I Am Legend. Because that short story is old as shit. How old is The Strain? Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Because there's a lot. Like, I Am Legend... Uh, not a lot of people are aware of this, but uh, George Romero copied uh, some of I Am Legend for Night of the Living Dead. I don't want to misquote it, but there's an old interview that George Romero talked about pulling um, inspiration from the short story I Am Legend and something else. There was another story, but because you think about it, you got the this person in isolation and the house is being attacked by waves of these vampires well in night of the living dead you get these survivors and their house is being attacked and but they're with zombies you know so you can start seeing the the you know this the setup for that story and the inspiration for that anyway i'm done is there anything you guys want to let me know and before i shut it down let me get rid of this Bop. Did he get burned here? He did. He he did get burned, but it doesn't affect him ever, ever. Huh? That's nice. I got burned once, and everything I touched after that fucking hurt tremendous, tremendously. Strain was in 2014. Oh, I Am Legend is old as shit. So, yeah. Strain definitely copied if it's similar. Let me see. Story. 
I Am Legend was published in 1954. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. You know what I just watched recently? Chucky Season 2. And it's a shame. There's some good moments, but man, they add in some cringe, yo. It's a shame. Because that could have been real fun. Anyway. Motherfucker. Don't worry. Don't worry, Auntie. Dara will win. Shut the fuck up. You don't know that. Shut. Stop saying. Stop talking out your ass. You know you're nobody special. Girl's like, give me that flag. See, this is a good scene. He couldn't get the flag out. Whoa. One thing I don't like. Daryl and the guy are fighting. This is one of those few moments in the fight that I thought was hella dumb. Uh, Daryl and the guy are fighting. And there's a moment where the guy gets tackled by a strong walker, a variant walker. And the variant does the same shit a normal walker does. Tackles him and just kind of goes, uh, but when we saw you tackle the other guy, you fucking ripped his guts out, you know, instantly. The guy's wounded and dies anyhow, the father. So why didn't the, the zombie go down and like, you know, fucking get his arm and take a chunk of flesh off his arm? Something, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then the second hit, he ends up tying the chain on there. So the zombie's arm came close and like took all like got scratched his face but like make it brutal but in this he tackles him and the zombies kind of like oh i don't want to hurt you you know ah oh, come on with the commercial break bitch Is it this part? Oh, yeah. That was cool. We still got two more of the... Yeah, this guy gets it. Ready? Bop! Oh, that's right. Oh, this shit was badass. Right there. Oh, man. Yo, that was badass. I like that. Wong. That shit was fire. That shit, I forgot about that. That shit was fire. When he took his leg off. Uh, and this was dumb. This is the part right here that was dumb as shit. And this is what I mean. Like, they got some really fire moments. But then there, there's a handful of this really stupid shit. Like, he gets tackled. Oh, I, I did like how they have the metal in the, in the head. So when he goes to hit him. He's having a hard time with it. Uh, here's where he gets tackled. But now remember, every time these walkers uh, attack somebody, they're just ripping them apart. You know, even other walkers. But this guy... Yeah, that's cool. Daryl flips his ass. And then this... But right here, the guy gets tackled. Boom! And then the, the walker does what? Watch with the walker. Let me make this a little bigger so you guys can see what the walker does after he tackles his ass. Look, he's tackled. Successful. And then... Uh, let me dance with you. Let me hump you a little bit. Cause, yeah, look at him. Uh, I don't want to hurt you, you know? Hey, what do you do? Grab his shoulder? Ah, uh, ever gently grab it, caress his shoulder? What are we doing? Uh, but then, then this part is badass. Pulls it. Oh, rips his fucking head off. And I love this part as well. Daryl picks him up, lifts up the head, and chucks it. That shit's cool. Where's it at? Yeah. That's awesome. Look at me. He should have said, You Frenchman, you bunch of pussies. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Whoa. That shit was awesome, but anyhow, that's it. That is it, chat. Uh, 
My bad, Ronnie didn't know The Strain was also a book. It was published in 2009. Uh... Well, that's fine. Even if the, the strain was published in 2009, that's still far after, you know, 19. Yo, would anybody be interested? Now, this might be a stretch. Would anybody be interested in a stream where I don't know if I would want to read I Am Legend, but what if we stream a audio book? Of I am legend. Let me see if they even have an audio book. Because if there is one. And we stream it. I, it's different. It might be different content. That maybe not everyone would be interested in. But. Because then we can maybe stop at the chapters. And you know kind of cover. What, what was there. Alright. Uh, I am legend. Audio. Audio book. Uh, I am legend audiobook. It is four hours long. So we could do like four. Well, it'd probably be more than that, but let me let me play it. Let's see what this one's. Calm down, bro. We'd probably have to test out different reading. Determined mouth and bright blue eyes, which moved now over the charred ruins of the neighboring houses. He'd burn them down to prevent them from jumping on his roof from the adjacent ones. What do you guys think about took that? took a long, slow breath and went back to the house, lit another cigarette, and had his mid-morning drink. It was almost noon. Robert Neville was in his hothouse collecting garlic. In the garlic? Beginning, it had made him sick to smell it in such quantity. I forgot. Now the smell was in his house and clothes, and sometimes he thought it was even in his flesh. Yeah, I forgot. See, they're vampires. The movie makes it seem, sound like they're like zombie mutate. No, they're, they're vampires. They're always vampires. It's stupid for them to be zombies. It doesn't make any sense. They're smart. They're clever. They set traps. They don't like garlic. They don't like the sunlight. They don't come out during the day. They're fucking vampires. <laughs> you know? Yeah, who'd hang out for that? You guys would hang out for that? Because um, we might do some of that. I don't I don't want to read it because it's going to be when I'm done with work and I, I just want to kind of hang out and I would like to read I Am Legend, but I'm thinking instead of me just reading it, maybe I'll listen to a little of the audio book. We can hang out and then, you know, at the breaks, we can kind of chat about it. You know what I'm saying? I would make it to where I'm only going to stop every however. I don't want to stop every five seconds, you know? When he had like, enough, he went back to, maybe every like ten minutes to the house and dumped them on the sink. As he flipped quick, the wall switch, you know. the light flickered and then flared into normal brilliance. A disgusted hiss passed his clenched teeth. That's the one generator was added. I thought I missed part of the storyline when White Mike Tyson shot everyone on his own team and let Daryl and Lauren and go. Go. Apparently not. Just shitty writing. Yep. Yeah, I the same way I was thinking like what? Hold on, this has me confused. This one is ten hours long. Why? This is hold on, I'm gonna look at this real quick. Um, I was the same way. I was like, where did this come from? I had to have missed something. This is terrible. Here's chapter one. Let me see. Quantity. Back to the house and sat on the couch. To fear the holy cross of God? Do you want to look into the mirror and not see the face that Almighty God has given you? Do you want to come crawling back from the grave like a Calm monster down. out of hell? Toward the end of the plague, yellow journalism had spread a cancerous dread toward her, and she drew back again with a frightened gasp. He extended his hand. Here, he said. Stand up. Feel more compassion for her. Altering voice said in the darkness. He took a trembling step. Now the seven vampires hurt Neville, she said. Cover that she was infected. All right, so this is, this is, I was trying to not spoil it, but also here to see where the story was at. And this looks like it is only four hours. A cigarette dangling from. 
he'd burned them down to prevent them from jumping on his roof from the adjacent ones. <laughs> After a few minutes, he took a long, slow breath and went back into the house. Here's another he reading. the hammer on the living room couch, then lit another cigarette and had his mid-morning drink. I don't know about that one. Uh, this other one that's 10 hours, what is that, though? Let me just look real quick. 47903. It's in pillowcase on his bed, but he didn't feel like it. Chapter 1. Well, yeah, look, vampires on the alone, fucking cover. And these things had no importance to him. Wait, what is this? It was almost noon. Small pan and clanked it down on a stove burner. Next, he thawed out the chops and put them under the broiler. By this time, the water was boiling. A few cookies and a thermos of hot coffee. Chapter 2. Jonathan and Blood-Eyed Count and all. Why do you wish him to have touched her? He slowed down a little until they came swarming around the over with clouds of night. The hot trickle of liquor down his throat. There are certain things established, he lectured himself. There is. The dog didn't come that afternoon. He went back and certain of these phenomena did not fit in with a bacilli. His boots thudded on the useless hermit. What did it mean? I don't get it. An out flattering mud. Oh, Fred, it's different books. Left hand gripping the so I'm legend. It Berry talents. Okay, no. Prey. Out iodine, gauze, and okay, so that's different shit. All right. That might work. Let me see what you guys have to say. Didn't one of the variant walkers attack one of the other walkers? Yes. Yeah, that happened. It's like they're, they're not quite perfected mutagen shit. I don't know. I've listened to audiobooks before. I'd be down to do it again. This narrator sounds like John Teller from Sons. <laughs> It's so always the adjacent ones you have to worry about. I'd be 100% down. I'd hang out for it. Okay, let me get rolling because i got to wake up early in the morning. Um, I'm a, I'm a keep that as a possibility coming up. Maybe we can hang out and do that because we're done with the Resident Evil one. But there's going to be a couple times where I'm going to want to hang out and not work or anything for a little bit after work. So... Maybe we'll do that audio book and then see. Because there's a few different experimental things I want to get into. The audio book might be one that one of the newer ones that I just thought of that I pushed that to the top. All right. Meet me back here for Fear the Walking Dead. I don't know when Troy is going to return, but I'll tell you now. We'll just come back for the premiere uh, if Troy's not in the premiere, uh, we'll figure out what we're doing, but we'll have at least a mini stream if Troy's not here. So uh, I think in a next weekend or the weekend after that, Fear the Walk Dead premiere is on AMC Plus. Uh, the the Sunday it airs is when we're gonna discuss it on this channel. So stay tuned for that. All right, thank you very much for the support, everybody. I really appreciate it. I'll see you here for that and upcoming I Am Legend. Uh, that might be fun, though, because then we can hear it and discuss some of the story elements because the, the, the short story is cool as hell. But all right. Thank you very much. Be safe. And I'll see you next next stream.